Greetings sailors and welcome to a bit of War Spy action courtesy of Meekin96 here. And although this is an older replay, uh, it's relevant now because in the latest patch, Wargaming have added a whole bunch of premium ships to the in-game shop. So if you've got the currency in-game, you can now buy a War Spy. You don't have to wait to uh, get a, a sale basically you can just go and buy it right now if you wanted to there's a bunch of other premium ships as well like the Murmansk and the Marblehead and the Kutuzov uh, the Campbelltown and the Ishizushi and probably one or two others I'm forgetting and by the way if you're wondering between a Marblehead and a Murmansk it's the Murmansk it really is the Marblehead just looks a bit uh, mediocre by comparison and I think that's putting it kindly but uh, yeah we're not talking about the Marblehead and the Murmansk we're talking about this thing so this is not a full ship review, I'm just going to talk about some of the good points and the bad points of the War Spite. And this is actually a pretty good game for showcasing the good points and the bad points of the War Spite. Uh, it, it, will, it will have um, both the amazing guns in action, but also it'll show you just how squashy the War Spite is for a battleship. But we'll start off with the good points, and like I said, it's the firepower. Now the Fuso and the New Mexico both have 14 inch main batteries. This has got 15 inch main batteries, so these are bigger guns, they pack more punch. The Citadels are not that much better, I think it's... Uh, I compared the New Mexico, the New Mexico Citadel AP's shots are something like 10,000 and something damage. This is over 11k per Citadel uh, for AP, so it's not like it's hugely more but it's more and I'm pretty sure that uh, <laughs> that detonation I'm pretty sure that they will have more penetrating power as well but there are some downsides now the principal ones that you will immediately notice are that the range is not very good and you can't actually extend that unlike the American battleships and the turret turn time is also pretty bad much like the Americans in fact I think it's worse than the New Mexico the flat, uh, the, the, the base turret turn time is 60 seconds, so it's one of those ships where it's almost quicker, in fact often is quicker, to turn around the ship rather than to turn around the turrets. And sometimes that's going to mean exposing yourself in ways that you don't particularly want to. But when those guns hit, they do hit hard. So, there's that. Now, there are some other good points. Uh, it's got good secondaries. It uh, turns very well even though it's slow again like the American battleships this is not a fast machine but the speed of it belies the nimbleness of it because it's very very good at dodging torpedoes and uh, that combined with the secondaries in fact you might even want to put on equipment that uh, actually buffs the secondaries and an AFT captain is definitely recommended it uh, is pretty good, actually, at handling destroyers at close range. Now, he's already dodged what had to be some Kuma torpedoes there. He's obviously clearly worried about the Minikaze as well, and uh, I think with good reason. I seem to remember that Minikaze did drop on him. But you're also seeing he's taking a lot of damage here, and he's also burning. This thing, and it is often remarked, burns like the decks are pre-soaked in petrol, basically. So... You have to expect to take a lot of fire damage in this. And it might just be that they've given it extra fire chance because it's uh, got wooden decks and they've decided that, you know, let's, let's just make it burn. All of the burning. Now there is an offset to the fact that this thing burns a lot and that the armour isn't very good. It just takes a lot of damage for a battleship, especially if you're getting into a fight with... Well, hell, not even if you're getting into a fight with another battleship. Look how much damage he's taking just from cruisers here. Um, yeah, basically the heal is more effective than it is on other ships. Now, for it, it's specifically for heavy damage and citadel damage. So, penetrating AP shots and even citadel shots, you can repair more of that damage than contemporary battleships can. But honestly, it doesn't feel like that particularly gives you an edge over the other tier 6 battleships just because of how easily this thing takes damage to begin with. So it more just feels like it's compensation for taking that much damage rather than here's this special unique ability of the war spike. 
it really doesn't end up feeling that way a lot of the time. It just feels like a, a thing that keeps you alive that little bit longer, because otherwise you die a lot quicker than, say, the Fuso, which can keep its range, or the New Mexico, which has armor. So it really is about the guns, and some people absolutely swear by these guns. Uh, others find this a particularly frustrating ship to play just because of the turret turn time and the lack of range. So it's one of those ships, and even if you've got an interest in the War Spite just because it was one of the most decorated Royal Navy ships in uh, service in World War II, uh, this still might not necessarily be the ship for you, but uh, I don't know, if you could stand the pace of American battleships in particular, then there's probably a good chance that you will get on with the War Spite. So he's already used a goodly number of his heels, and he's had to. They're now pushing down into the middle, but uh, that Königsberg is definitely within torpedo range, so he's going to have to be aware of that. And of course his rear turrets are pointing the wrong way. So he's... He's basically trying to lead the push, and yes, by the way, there is a South Carolina on their team, if you've noticed that on the minimap. So that was a bit of failed platooning right there, but uh, it's not going to cost them too badly, fortunately. Uh, they are, I mean, they're actually behind at the moment, but it's around about now when Meekin starts to make this push that uh, their fortunes are going to turn around. And this is, I think, why when... Uh, oh, that's just unfortunate. <laughs> You'd think that kind of broadside shot at that range would uh, be a bit more effective, but sadly no. And there's the torpedo, so you're going to get to see that dodging in action. Um, yes, this is the kind of time where making a push in a battleship can basically turn the tide of a battle. So, uh, even though this is maybe not the best battleship to do it in, and New Mexico would be much more effective, or hell, even a Fuso, uh, but, um, you know, it's up to Meekin, really, because uh, there are other battleships. Are uh, a New York that's in the south, and there's South Carolina, and uh, I think there's a, a Wyoming around somewhere as well. So, uh, if they want to contest this middle cap, which they need for the points, it's really up to him. But there's some scary enemies down there, and he actually decides to prioritise the New Mexico, it looks like. However, that Königsberg hasn't gone away either, so uh, yeah. Oh no, he's going to go for the Kuma instead. No, Svetlana, I can tell the difference. Now, it's funny actually, the, the Kuma he was trying to shoot at earlier, who uh, and is still alive at this point, I think. Um, basically, he was driving at like half or quarter speed for quite a lot of the battle, and I couldn't quite figure out why. Anyway, the Königsberg's coming back to clearly try and make another torpedo drop. But, well... He seems to have messed it up, so um, yeah, he's done for. And this time, Meekin isn't going to miss. So, okay, there we go. However, he's getting awfully close to some quite nasty ships. And, oh, hello, I spoke too soon. Well, maybe some of those torpedoes were, in fact, from the Minikaze. And actually, yes, they must have been, because the Minikaze that we saw a little while ago uh, is still very much alive. Now, he takes the torpedo, which is a bit nasty. And, in fact, he kind of messed up there because... As you hopefully are aware, generally you want to turn into torpedoes rather than turn away from them. But he took the hit without flooding, and that's going to be useful, because if he gets set on fire again, well, that'll be quite handy. Anyway, he gets a really nice salvo. I mean, this is why war spike drivers who love the turpits... Not the turpits... <laughs> what? Well, those are sentences. War Spite drivers who love the War Spite, this is why they love the War Spite. It's salvos like that, 20k damage without citadels. And okay, you could probably do that with a New Mexico or a Fuso. But you could definitely do that with a Fuso. But considering that it's only got um, the same... Is it actually the same guns? The same number of guns? as I can't remember offhand how many turrets New Mexico has. But uh, certainly fewer guns available than the uh, Fuso. Well... It's, yeah, it, it can pack a mean old punch, and although this is kind of risky, look at this. Now that was just bow on. That was just, like, wow. No problem, you know, bow armor, whatever, I'm just going to shoot through that. So, it's the guns. This is why people love this ship. It's these guns. So, they're taken and held B, and, um, well, as you can see, they're well ahead on points at this stage. Uh, the enemy team hasn't even really been able to deal with uh, the member of Meekin's team that were in the south. And it's not like it's that far apart on numbers, but Meekin's... Ah, uh, there we go, Confederate and High Caliber. Meekin's team are very firmly in control at this point. And it's because Meekin pushed down, took B, 
and the enemy team lost control, they lost the points, and um, they are struggling to deal with the remainder of uh, his teammates. However, he's still taking a fair old battering, and he's down to like a quarter health now, a little bit over that, so... Uh, yeah, if he had been citadel by the Wyoming, that maybe could have been a problem to the extent of actually sending him to the bottom, but as it was, no. So he's going to turn and re-engage this Congo, and, well, broadside Congo, this could be nice. And it is, that's 13k, so six hits. The accuracy of the, these guns is pretty good. It's better base accuracy than the New Mexico, but actually the Fuso... Uh, considering the range that the Fuso gets, it also has basically the best dispersion of all three. The dispersion figure for the Fuso with its 21 kilometer range, uh, if you look at it, is only slightly over what the, uh, the Wolfspite has with like five less kilometers range. So these are reasonably accurate guns, but the Fuso wins easily when it comes to uh, uh, accuracy, even though they are smaller guns, of course you get more of them, so I would still honestly take the Fuso over this thing any day of the week, but if you can stand that slow pace, then uh, yeah, this can be a very nice performing ship, and of course it's a premium, so for a match like this, where we can see it's gotten 129,000 damage on the clock, it's going to be quite profitable, and as you can see, yes, there it is. So, of the premium battleships in the game, um, the Arkansas Beta, well, you basically can't buy that. This, the uh, the other tier 4s, like the Imperator Nikolai, the, the Turpits, I mean, honestly, I think the Turpits is still the best. The Imperator Nikolai is probably the most troll, but the War Spite's still pretty decent. And as you can see, easily top of his team. Capping did help, but even so, a lot of that was just from the damage done. So it was a nice profitable game, not bad for uh, that time spent, but I will throw in this cautionary note, although the Warspite is pretty capable when it's top tier, when you're bottom tier, it does start to suffer, just because you don't have the range. And of course you have a spotter plane to use, but there's quite a cooldown even if you're using the premium version of the spotter plane, it's like two minutes, something like that. So. Um, yeah, it, it's problematic, and you know you take the rough with the smooth when it comes to to matchmaking. So hopefully you found this somewhat useful and informative, and you know if it was entertaining too, that's uh, so much the better. And if you have, you can hit that like button. You can leave any comments below. You can sub to my channel if you haven't already. And as always, stay tuned for more.